Hello and welcome to Vivid Mini Mods. Today I'm going to be converting a Primaris Death Guard Plague Marine. Here you can see the Plague Marine is almost as tall as a Primaris, but I want a Plague Champion who is towering above his subordinates. For this conversion I'll be using a Primaris Space Marine and Successor as the base, Death Guard Plague Marines for parts, as well as bits from the Warhammer Fantasy Flagellants and an arm from the Age of Sigma Blight Kings. So without further ado, Let's get into the conversion. I begin by gluing the legs of the space moon, leaving the chest piece off. I'm not going to glue on the shin guards, I'll be cutting off the leg at the knee to replace them with the death guard legs. You can see they're almost the same size as the intercessor shins, so I shouldn't have too much trouble with the size difference. I begin cleaning the contact points to make them as flat as possible, which will make for more solid connection when glued. For the second leg, I had to remove the tabard which was still present. I should point out these legs are from another conversion I did and kept my bits box. Whenever I do a conversion I always try and keep as many bits I cut off as possible you never know when they're going to come in handy, like now. The right foot is bent in such a way as to indicate a bend in the knee, so I have to snip away the intercessor leg to find the right angle. The one problem with push fit models, like the death guard leg, is they are meant to fit in a certain way which gives a more dynamic pose, but it's somewhat of pain when you're trying to convert as you try and replicate the original pose. I glued the boy to the base for now so I can handle it easier. And only a few drops of super glue so I transfer the model to a different base after I painted. Now to find a suitable chest piece for the champion. The original is way too clean to be Death Guard, so I found one of the many spare chest pieces from the Plague Marine kit. In order to get a clean fit, I'll have to cut away the belt buckle from the intercessor. With plenty of glue, I try attaching the Death Guard chest piece. I don't have any liquid green stuff at the moment, so I'll fill in the smaller gaps with some plastic glue. These gaps were hidden by the arms, so they don't need too much detail. With the chest on, it's beginning to look a lot more like this rotten son of Nurgle. Now I'll move on to the arms. For these I will do a complete conversion, starting with the arm they'll wield the plague sword. I found this spiky pauldron that I think will work well. For the arms I'll use one of the Blight King pieces, though the sword is too short. For the sword I will use something from another conversion. I think the sword arm from the Dark Mechanica model, which I have yet to finish. By carefully cutting the sword blade off, I will use that for the mini. I chopped off the pipe, which went straight into my bits box, and began removing the arm from the pauldron.
but they all glued together to test fit against the body to see how it will look. Luckily the glue on the shoulder is still a bit pliable, so I could twist it slightly into position that looked better. Now for the other arm, the one that will wield the plasma gun. I found this interesting pauldron which looks like a chimney pipe sticking out of it, very nurgle. But this was from a push fit kit and still had the head attached. The head would not fit well with my vision for this model, so it has to go. Next I need to figure out a way to fit the plasma gun onto the bolt gun arm. Normally I would cut at the elbow, but the plasma gun is another push fit and the elbow is covered by chainmail. If I remove it, then I lose a lot of the detail. I decided instead I will try and cut and twist the countdown round to face forward and then try a gun substitution. I very, very carefully cut the elbow of the arm so it would not do damage to either side of the cut. I put barely any pressure on the clippers at this point as I want them to almost pull the plastic apart rather than cut through it. This will leave me a little bit of leeway when twisting it around. Now for something even more delicate, removing the hand from the gun. As this part is so small, the detail will be lost if I make any kind of mistake or rush to cut it. After making the initial cut, I switch to a hobby knife and begin using a rocking motion to cut very gently through the plastic. For the plasma gun, I was more vicious cutting off the hand and then removing bits piece by piece. If this was any other faction then I would just made a cut of the wrist, but you might be able to see the lower arm guard covers the hand slightly, so this was not possible. With that taken care of, I knew the problem with the other hand that supported the plasma gun, as this piece is normally meant to held across the body in two hands. I found this Nurgle tentacle which I used to cut up the place where I'll cut the hand off. It's all about the small details to make a conversion, especially the connection points, and anything that will cut off as a lack of detail that will be obvious. With the difficult piece taken care of, I started on the remainder of the model. The backpack was from the, you guessed it, Plague Marines kit. Swapping backpacks and heads are easy conversion if you just start getting the kit bashing. You need to make slight alterations to the model and they almost always fit perfectly without having to make any drastic changes to the original mini. The single this marine is a champion aside from his tower and stature. 
I use what I think is a flaming blade grenade to make a standard which I glue around the top of his backpack. Back to the plasma gun, I noticed that the support in hand was, you can still see some odd detail. To cover this up I'll use a bit from the flagellants kit from Warhammer Fantasy. You can get so many random pieces in this kit, along with some of the best bear heads I've seen. I've seen some people use them on Inquisition models and they look perfectly grim dark. Another piece from the flagellant kits are these bells, and everyone knows Death God needs to have bells somewhere on them. Plus it will cover the join where I covered with plastic glue earlier. The other side, I'll use a skull and skull combo would sound like something you could order at a grim dark takeaway. Now the Primaris Plague Marine Champion is starting to take shape. Let's compare it to a subordinate, an actual Primaris Marine. He definitely looks the part, stand head and shoulders above the standard Death Guard model and even taller than an infiltrator. Finally, I have to decide on the head for this guy. I chose a couple from my bits box and started to compare them to see which looks best. First we have one that looks like the top of a play caster staff on his head. Next is the fly guy. I love the grotesque ideas that Game Workshop came up with when making these sculpts. Third is Mini Typhus with his rhino horn, and last with a bear head that was way too small. I think the fly guy looks best, it kind of fits to this theme with this bloated left arm. Now to fill in those gaping holes I made from chopping up the clean space marine and mutilating him for Grandfather Nurgle. For this I'll be using Milliput and some dentist tools to shape it. You can see in some of my other videos how I use Milliput to make some rather interesting shapes and textures, but for this one I just aim to fill the gaps. I'm going to fill in the neck to give the head something to stand on. I use the head to make a slight indentation in the soft milliput. This will not only give it a cleaner contact point, but also act as a cup allowing the head to sit in the model rather than on top of it. I use some rolled up milliput to make some boils which add to the back side of the mini, the last remaining piece that was untainted. 
Next I got the drill and started making some pock marks and battle damage all over the model where it looked too clean. I don't want a single piece of this model to look bright eyed space marine it started as. When I finish with it, it will be twisted and tainted into abomination forever in the command of Nurgle. With the head in place, let's campaign once again. The infiltrator could be one of his battle brothers. Now we use the sworn rival as he towers above him, obliterating the space marines around him with an overcharged plasma gun before going in for a killing blow with his toxic plague sword. I'll be painting this pestilent one in sub assembly so not be gluing the arms and head onto the body, which means we now go to the turntable. I had a lot of fun with this model, and I've been mean to make it for a while. With my other armies taking up my time, I couldn't fit him in. Now I can dedicate more time to my death guard, I think he will be the start of my second wave of Nurgle corrupted abominations. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, if you did, leave a thumbs up. And hopefully I'll be making another video in less than 7 months this time.